Oxygen OS 12 is currently in beta for the OnePlus 7 series. With Android 13 just around the corner, this one has definitely been a long time coming. So has the wait been worth it? I won't really comment on bugs as some are to be expected being a beta. I will drop a link to a support article where others have listed their issues extensively. My use has been better than expected, but then this software has been on other devices for quite some time too. The best way I would describe Oxygen OS 12 is an incremental update to 11, with some color OS thrown in. So for those that don't like either, you probably won't love this. Performance and animations look nice and smooth, offering little hesitation to my pokes and prods. Most animations still look fairly similar to 11. Extra haptics have been added though, like a subtle buzz when you get to the end of pages and menus. Charging still looks the same, but when connecting to a PC, you do get a very ColorOS pop-up now. The home screen had a bit of a change, with the launcher looking to also take quite a few cues from ColorOS. There are a few more options and animations to play around with. We still retain the same quick settings menu though, not adopting Google's bubbles. But a big notable difference is the shelf is no longer found on the left, now Google Feed. Shelf is still around though, with the swipe down from the top right. I found this pretty awkward, as depending on how you use your device, you might find yourself accidentally bringing up the shelf even more than you usually did. It's also weirdly inconsistent, as while it's a swipe down to have it appear, a swipe up doesn't get rid of it, instead requiring a back gesture. But with Google Feed, swiping right summons it, and an opposing left swipe dismisses it, but the back gesture doesn't work. While on the shelf though, it has had a bit of a redesign, but it's still the shelf. I did add OnePlus Scout here, basically a universal device search. It could be useful for those that like the idea, but it's still not enough to have me embrace the shelf. As we move into customizations, the ColorOS influence really becomes apparent. Don't get me wrong, I actually love this extra stuff. They let you really individualize things, going as basic or themed as you want. The ability to hide the peel gesture bar is still here, something I'd like Google to implement. The notification volume has been separated from the call volume. There are more options to customize your fingerprint animation, but oddly less customization for the horizon light compared to 11, and way less than what custom ROMs offer. There's also generally more options to let you tweak elements down to font, icons, and the status bar, but it's not always the case. One of the headline features of Android 12 usually is Material U theming, and that's nowhere to be found. Keeping the thin slider bar style and your choice of any one color. What is a bonus though is extra dark mode options, now offering three different levels. I know some live for the pure AMOLED black, but I much prefer something like medium to avoid the jelly look while scrolling. We now have a theme store too so you can pick up a fresh look or be inspired. Zen mode was listed as updated, but I couldn't really tell and don't really use it anyway. And a work-life balance feature has been added, letting you schedule app availability to certain times. Apparently this was already present in the Indian versions, but should now be available everywhere. Gaming features have been expanded, offering an overlay on games, squeezing out a tad more performance minimizing distractions, and giving you a bit more performance info. I enjoy the full screen of the 7T Pro for occasional games, and the hardware is still capable. The privacy dashboard got a slight update. With that, we also have the privacy dots that let you know when sensors are being used, and the ability to just turn sensors on. Which leads us into the privacy protection stuff, which is somewhat interesting, offering different levels of paranoia. You can put a simple passcode on certain apps to lock them down, or you can still use the classic app hide feature. 
but instead of sneakily putting them to the side of the app drawer, they now require a super secret dialer code to access. There's also the private safe that lets you lock away files behind a security code. Definitely the place to store gift ideas for friends, right? An improvement for Canvas is included with some additional options. A feature I'd never really used due to the lack of an always on display. But the always on display does get an adjustment here too. It's not a true always on experience with it being listed as power saver and it doesn't look to be changeable. Unclear if this is intended, but compared to Oxygen OS 11, your chosen ambient display does linger for a little longer, striking a decent balance between convenience and battery loss. Speaking of battery, like most of the other menus, this looks to have picked up some Color OS 2, sporting a new usage page, but also an optimization page offering suggestions that may yield some extra battery longevity, and even giving estimates of those gains in minutes. Battery life felt pretty good. I didn't measure specifically though, again, beta. In their effort to improve battery efficiency though, the absolute worst feature of both Oxygen OS and Color OS is still present, and that's RAM management. The software thinks it knows best and will routinely kill off tasks that it thinks you don't need. This is best shown in the Don't Kill My App benchmark, which very basically runs a whole heap of repeating tasks and schedules alarms every so often, then gives a score for how many were carried out. Even when run over seven hours, many custom ROMs and stock Android yield 100%. So they don't kill any tasks and everything is completed and reliable. When the same was run for Oxygen OS 12, it returned an abysmal 35% overall with around 97% of repeated tasks killed off by the OS, and even 33% of scheduled alarms failed. Even going into high performance mode only improved this marginally. There is nothing more I hate than a device that gives you plenty of RAM, adds in a RAM boost, but then doesn't even let you make use of it. As I already said, this Feels like a subtle update to Oxygen OS 11 with some Color OS features thrown in. At least it didn't go full Color OS. While I've always been a sucker for stock Android since the Nexus days, I also do love me some customization, as that's what Android's always been about. But not at the expense of usability and glacially slow updates, which are both the case here. I do appreciate the update. Eventually. But Oxygen OS isn't the darling that it once was. At least custom ROMs are keeping OnePlus alive. Cheers for watching guys. Why not check out some videos on some custom ROMs on the OnePlus 7 series while you're here.